Hi friends, this is Mike Eccles from Max Cybersecurity. Thought I'd just give you a few insights on how to protect yourself, considering there's been four billion data records stolen over the last few years from corporations and from people that we can't even count because they never reported it. Um, just a few things to start. Uh, with hacking scams and malware and the proliferation of people trying to steal personal data for their personal gain, it's imperative that you start to live a cybersecure life. There's a few ways that you can go about doing this um, that don't really cost you a whole lot of money, don't really cost you anything, but could save you a whole lot of money. The first thing that I want to talk about is you need to create some complex passwords to the point that you're creating phrases. Phrases like, my name is John Doe and I am a great person. Something that's easy for you to remember. Typically, you wouldn't use your name or any other identifiable information in that, but of course you would use something that you could remember. It makes it just a little harder for the hackers to figure out through brute force attacks what your password is. Secondly, I would say you should boost your network security. Um, now that you've learned how to log in a little safer, make sure that your connections are good and safe. And what we mean by that is some people don't even change their Wi-Fi passwords. They have the default password in the system, which means that a hacker who comes along and scans many routers can essentially crack through your default password. In some cases, they can take over your system. And just to keep this a little more simple, you can buy a VPN, a VPN, virtual private network, that allows you to send your emails encrypted through a tunnel, as opposed to just open, simple text. And then number three, I would say use firewalls. You can get personal firewalls, and essentially that puts a barrier between you and say a open public Wi-Fi, or even a secure Wi-Fi. That firewall is gonna give you a capability to understand what's going on in your little personal network. And again, it adds another level of complexity for even the skip uh, script kitty who is trying to use something they learned on YouTube to get into your personal network or to steal your password, or to simply invade your privacy. And then fourth, I would say click smart. And what we mean by click smart is phishing, or when someone sends you an email and it has a link in it, or they prompt you to go to a certain website. That is the number one way that hackers gain access and gain trust, allowing them to extend their uh, connectivity across your network. So when you get an email from someone that you don't recognize, or you get an offer that is too good to be true, don't click on the link. Go out to the World Wide Web and put the URL in the bar and go to it yourself. Um, these seem really simple, but by using this sort of good cyber hygiene, you will eliminate the probability that you are the next victim of some random hacker. And then last, I would say be selective about what you share. Many people go on to social media sites and they tell everything. I've never understood why somebody would tell the world that they will be away from their home for two weeks. You're essentially inviting a physical attack on your home. Well, it's the same with a digital attack. People go out, they give enough information to add to the data that has already been stolen about you from other corporations to allow a hacker millions of miles away to reach you and your personal life. How does, it, how does this affect you? It affects you in a lot of ways. If somebody steals your identity, there's truly no way for you to reclaim it. It's an uphill battle for you. There are no identity police. There is no government agency that you call that comes in and fixes it. In any case, it's your life, and it's important that you secure it. This is Mike Eccles, and I'll see you soon. Come visit me, MikeEccles.com.